Let us now start proving the gibbs weight theorem. As we have mentioned in our previous module, uh, it says that if you have three or more alternatives, uh, then the every social choice function that is onto and strategy proof um, implies and is implied by the fact that this uh, social choice function is dictatorial. And we have also seen uh, a corollary in the previous module which says that under strategy proofness all these notions of Pareto efficiency, unanimity and ontoness are the same. So this is this corollary here. And uh, therefore uh, you can restate the gibbs hathaway theorem uh, uh, replacing this ontoness with Pareto efficiency or unanimity. So in some texts you will find uh, similar definitions and they are all the same. Now let us, uh, before uh, moving on to the proof, let us uh, look at some of the points that we can note from this uh, statement which is implied and which are not implied by uh, gibbs hathaway result. So the first uh, observation that we can make is that uh, this uh, number of alternatives needs to be at least three or more. If you had three, uh, two alternatives, then we know that there exists some certain kind of um, onto and strategy proof mechanisms, strategy proof uh, social choice functions, for instance, uh, plurality or any uh, kind of uh, scoring uh, rule based mechanisms uh, that we have discussed before. They are all non dictatorial uh, social choice functions, uh, yet they are uh, onto and strategy proof. So, that is uh, uh, one interesting point to note. Uh, it, uh, the givers of the word uh, result does not hold when you have two alternatives. The second uh, observation that we are going to make is that this domain uh, of this uh, social choice function uh, is the entire uh, set of all possible strict preferences. So script P essentially denotes that it's the uh, permutation of all possible alternatives. So if you have M alternatives, uh, script P uh, lists all possible uh, M factorial uh, permutations of these alternatives which can potentially be the, uh, the preferences of these agents. So this actually gives so um, one way to um, visualize or um, build an intuition about this result is that the domain of the social choice function is too rich and uh, the voter has many options to misreport and that uh, essentially gives rise to such kind of an impossibility result. Later on we will see that if your domain was limited that is not all possible uh, uh, strict preferences over these alternatives were feasible in your social choice function, then uh, GS theorem may not hold and we will see examples of that. The third uh, observation is about indifference. We have so far uh, discussed about uh, strict preferences. Uh, you can actually generalize or include more things about uh, indifferences in preferences. So uh, you can either uh, expand P, so because indifferences uh, could actually lead to a superset of, uh, of script P that we have discussed. If that happens, then you already know the type of constructions that we are going to do uh, already exist there. So in that case, GS theorem will continue to hold. But if you have, li uh, uh, you ha if you have removed some of these preferences, uh, some of the strict preferences that we are going to consider, then possibly GS theorem won't hold. So it all depends on the uh, the domain. So uh, just uh, remember that uh, our social choice function was a mapping script p to the power n. That means all the uh, players have this uh, all, uh, the uh, preferences which lives in script p, and we are uh, picking one alternative. So this is the social choice setup that we are picking one alternative out of uh, uh, from this uh, preference profile. If you have uh, uh, this uh, domain to be very much restricted, which we will discuss uh, very soon, then uh, GS theorem can be bypassed and we will see such examples. And the cardinalization, the last point is about cardinalization. You, uh, uh, here we are only talking about the ordinal preferences of these agents, 
but uh, if there are cardinal preferences which uh, also includes uh, uh, note that uh, cardinalization is just uh, uh, another way of representing or maybe a richer way um, of representing uh, the uh, the preferences if the numbers are equal the cardinal numbers are equal then you can uh, assume that they are indifferent uh, if they are unequal then you can have a complete ordering between those alternatives yeah, if uh, by cardinalization you are not uh, ruling out all the all the possible uh, p's all the strict preferences that we are going to use in, in the proof then uh, uh, gs theorem will continue to hold so in some sense we can say that uh, uh, cardinalization that admits all those uh, strict preferences for all these agents um, then in that domain also we can say that an equivalent GS theorem will hold. So it does not really matter on cardinalization or ordinalization. It just matters that how these alternatives are positioned. Uh, what are the uh, possible ways you can order them? Okay, so with that, uh, let us uh, start the proof. And for this proof, we are going to follow a very direct approach. And this is uh, due to SEN 2001. So at the end, I'll give the complete reference for this uh, for this paper. And what we are going to do in this module, uh, because the proof is essentially a little long and uh, uh, quite laborious to follow, so therefore we will just look at the simpler setting uh, of uh, two uh, players, two uh, voters, and uh, then apply induction. So this proof essentially uses, uh, proves it for two uh, agents and then applies induction. We will not um, discuss this induction step because that will be uh, uh, too involved. Uh, but the two agent uh, case is uh, quite easy to follow and that is what we are going to do in this uh, module to build the intuition. So in order to prove it, let us uh, go um, uh, in steps. So the first sub result, uh, the lemma is that if we have three or three or more alternatives and you have two agents, one and two, and the fact that F is on to end strategy proof, then for every preference profile, what we can conclude is that this outcome will either be the topmost alternative of player 1 or the topmost alternative of player 2. So it cannot be any other alternative apart from these two things. So this is what it means. If it happens that these uh, two alternatives are the same, then we already know and this is something that we are going to use over and over again. Even though we have stated ontoness and strategy proofness in the statement of, the, of this theorem, we all also know from the previous corollary that it is equivalent to say this is Pareto efficient or unanim unanimous. That is because the stra under strategy proofness all these uh, results are, are the same and we are going to, uh, in our proof, we are going to use all of these results um, interchangeably. So we have already made uh, use of one of those results. Uh, so here we are assuming that uh, F is uh, unanimous as well. So uh, if that is unanimous, then and uh, this uh, uh, two alternatives are one and the same, then uh, uh, the the theorem holds uh, the the lemma holds because uh, then unanimity will actually imply that uh, it is uh, uh, it uh, should be the same outcome. The outcome of the social choice function should be the should be the same because the both the players are agreeing on the on their top alternatives so therefore let us assume for the general case uh, these two alternatives are not the same the topmost alternative of one is a and the topmost alternative of b uh, of two is b now let us assume for contradiction that uh, the outcome the final outcome is neither a nor b so we are actually negating this statement so it's not neither a nor b uh, and uh, notice that this requires you to use three alternatives, at least three alternatives. And now we are going to look at, a, uh, uh, as before, we are going to look at certain transitions. Uh, so we are going to construct certain preference profiles. We are given this particular preference profile, P1 and P2, and we know that the outcome here is C, uh, by our assumption, which is neither the top alternative of 1, neither the top alternative or, uh, of 2. So now what we are going to do, so we are looking at this uh, first alternative here, so the topmost alternative of player 1, and we are uh, putting that A in this 
in this way. Similarly, we are also constructing another preference uh, profile where uh, uh, the, the second, so uh, B, that is the top alternative of player 2 has been pushed uh, to, to the top, to the second top and uh, the other alternative remains, the other preference uh, profile remains the same. Similarly, here it was the first player's preference profile was uh, uh, kept the same. And for the second player's preference, so A was maybe somewhere down below here, it has been pushed to the second top. Now, what uh, can we say? Uh, so we can, uh, we, uh, we can uh, conclude uh, for this particular preference profile here, that the outcome should be either A or B. And why is that? That is because of the Pareto efficiency. Uh, and here we are actually using, using this fact that uh, uh, F is also Pareto efficient. So that means it will not pick something which is Pareto dominated. And what is Pareto dominated? So uh, anything except um, uh, B and A is Pareto dominated uh, by both these players uh, with respect to A. So A Pareto dominates all other uh, alternatives here. So therefore, none of those can be an outcome uh, in this preference profile if F, uh, because F is Pareto efficient. So it has the only option of uh, uh, of either A or B. That that should be the outcome. Now uh, now let us notice that if this outcome was B, for instance, then uh, what player uh, two gets if you if you look at it. So here the uh, here the outcome is B and here the outcome is C which is strictly worse than B for player 2. So uh, and because player 1's preference is not changing then player 2 will misreport from P2 to P2 prime and that will be uh, a benef beneficial deviation. So since uh, if is strategy proof as well we cannot have this alternative so B is ruled out the only option therefore is uh, under this alternative is A. So it, it should have A as its outcome. So similar arguments you can apply here as well and uh, look at the transition from here to here and uh, apply the same argument uh, for player 1 and you can see that uh, here the outcome is definitely going to be B. Uh, it, it cannot have A. So uh, B will be the outcome in this case. It's a very symmetric argument. Now uh, we are in a nice position to uh, make a transition so you notice that this is p2 prime and this preference profile is nothing but collecting together this p1 prime and this p2 prime for these two players and uh, what we can observe is if you trans uh, if you transition from from this preference profile to here what is happening is that uh, for uh, i mean the the, uh, the position of b uh, is remaining the same in this case so if you apply uh, the equivalent definition of strategy proofness which is monotonicity then uh, you, you can conclude that here the outcome would have been B but if you apply the same argument from here to here uh, of course so what is happening is that uh, here the uh, the, re uh, the uh, relative position of, uh, of B was same here the relative position of A remains same right so here also A is relative position does not change uh, you can again apply monotonicity and you can conclude that this outcome will be A. And since A is not equal to B, this is a contradiction. Uh, I mean, you arrive at a contradiction from one transition you are getting an alternative which is A, the other transition is telling uh, the uh, alternative will be, the outcome will be B and that cannot happen. So what we have assumed that uh, here the outcome is C which is neither A nor B, uh, then that is that is not true. So that, so we have actually proved uh, this this lemma. All right. So with that lemma in our hand, uh, now we can actually uh, go and uh, prove the reverse other result for two alternatives. So what do we have here? So we have um, for two alternatives, we have uh, at least three. Uh, so two agents, we have at least three alternatives. And we know that this is an on-point strategy proof. So strategy proof means that this is equivalent to monotonicity. We have used it uh, already. And on-toness means that it can also be better efficient or unanimous. So just to keep in mind that uh, this, this is what it means. And let us assume that uh, the topmost alternative of player one and player two are not the same. So this is A and this is B. 
and let us look at a different uh, 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 preference profile of both these players where the topmost alternative is C for player 1 and the topmost alternative is D for player 2. And uh, there are two conclusions that if the uh, outcome in the first preference profile is the top alternative of player 1, that is it is A, then it should continue to be the top alternative of player 1, so uh, that will be C. And similarly, if the top alternative is of uh, B, uh, of uh, player 2, which is B, then in the new preference profile, the top alternative will be the same, the, the top alternative of the same player, which is D. And uh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll just prove this one part because the, the proof of the second part will be uh, quite symmetric. So uh, without loss of generality, we, we will just prove this. Um, so just to uh, mention that um, this actually uh, proves the dictatorship for two players. And, uh, and uh, then later on, uh, this, uh, the, this direct proof that we have mentioned actually uses an induction for uh, more than two players. Now one uh, um, uh, thing that we have already observed and we have also uh, mentioned uh, earlier that if C and D are same, so in this case we are not uh, putting any constraints about C and D, so if C and D are same then unanimity implies uh, that uh, 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 this, uh, this conclusion will be true. So the lemma is uh, trivial in that case. So for all, all the non-trivial cases we will assume that C is not equal to D, so that is what we are going to assume. Now let us uh, list down all possible exhaustive cases and there are six cases uh, where C is not equal to D mm. and, um, and since we are considering only, only this uh, part, so the first uh, implication of, uh, of this lemma, uh, we are going to assume, so even, uh, even when we say case 1, you can also create a, an equivalent uh, statement. Uh, which uh, involves the uh, the second agent's case, so um, uh, it is it can be the same argument can be interchangeably used for player one and player two to show that uh, if you flip the names, so here this is player one, this is player two, but if you flip uh, their identities, make player one, player two, and player two, player one, then the similar argument will follow, and uh, we can get the similar conclusion. So we are not going to prove that part in the in this proof, but whenever we are using um, you know, some of these cases, some of these later cases here, and we, we are referring to case one, we are uh, going to assume that 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 this other counterpart is also true, because sometimes we'll need those cases to be used. Okay, so uh, so let us first uh, list down all the cases. So here. The, uh, so the first uh, case is where the C and D is equal to A and B, then you keep the second alternative fixed and the first alternative is neither A nor B. Uh, then these, uh, the other case is where it is the first uh, alternative of this player is remaining the same and the second, al and the second player's uh, top alternative is neither B, not equal to B. And similarly you can, uh, you can list out all possible cases. So. Um, just uh, check that uh, this actually covers all the possible cases that can po potentially happen when C is not equal to D. And we have listed it in this way because that this will give us some uh, advantage in proving. We will use some of this, uh, the proofs of some of these cases in the later cases as well. Okay, so let us go over these uh, cases one by one. So the first case is where C is equal to A and D is equal to B. So, when C is equal to A and uh, D is equal to B, so this is the, uh, the, the modified profile, so this is the original profile uh, and we are going to assume that the outcome here was A. So uh, the outcome here is A. Now we are, we, are, uh, uh, we are supposed to say what is the out, what is going to be the outcome here and C that is uh, this, uh, uh, the topmost alternative of player 1 in this uh, in this new profile is A and that for player 2 is B. Now we are going to construct a different uh, preference profile and that is very carefully chosen. Uh, what we have done is we have uh, uh, pushed B onto the second top position and similarly for player 2 A to the second top position. Now uh, we already know by the previous lemma, the lemma that we proved in the beginning of this module, that uh, the in this uh, uh, preference profile the outcome will be either A or B. 
that is all uh, that is something that we already know now uh, our uh, um, uh, conclusion is that it should be the outcome will be a uh, now let us uh, for contradiction contradiction of the current lemma let us assume that this outcome is b so that is uh, even though the in the first uh, preference profile the top most alternative of player 1 was chosen so in the second preference profile uh, the top most alternative of player 2 was chosen so let's do that then let's see what is the uh, contradiction then what you can say here is from if you go from this preference profile so from this preference profile to this preference profile that we have constructed uh, we see that the a's relative position has weakly increased so a was uh, somewhere down below in this case uh, and it has moved to the second uh, top position uh, because b was on the top in this previous one uh, A's uh, uh, relative position has weakly improved. So we can apply monotonicity onto it and because A was the outcome here, A will continue to be the outcome according to monotonicity. But now we can apply the same thing between these two uh, preference uh, profiles because here uh, B was somewhere down below and B has been pushed to the uh, second uh, top position for player 1. Using the same argument and same monotonicity, we can conclude that the outcome will be B. Case. So that is essentially a uh, contradiction. So uh, in one of these transitions, we conclude that this is B, and the other transition we conclude that is A, which is not uh, which is not possible. So we cannot have this uh, uh, this condition B to be true. So this has to be A. So this uh, this question mark is essentially A. So we have proved case one in this case. So let us look at case 2 where C is neither A nor B and the second alternative is B. Now uh, we know that this C, uh, this is a different alternative and uh, neither A nor B and we also know that uh, this topmost alternative in this, uh, this two topmost alternatives, one of them will be the outcome and again uh, as before we are going to uh, assume for contradiction this is the outcome. Then again we, we can uh, uh, construct a P1 hat and notice that P2 we are going to keep the same. So this is the same as this P2. Now uh, what what did we do in this uh, P1 hat? We have actually uh, we kept A somewhere here and we have pushed A onto the top. Now again if you apply uh, the, the condition from P1 P2 right so P1 uh, P2 uh, to to this condition uh, that uh, we already know uh, that using this case one so what was case one so the the topmost alternatives for both these players are remaining identical maybe the position of the other alternatives are changing but their topmost positions are remaining the same so therefore uh, using case one we can conclude because uh, and this is we are using uh, the same uh, case one for player uh, player two there we were we were proving it for player one, but uh, player two we have uh, we have said that a similar argument will hold even for player two. So we are using that. So here the topmost alternative of player B, uh, player two, that is B, was the outcome. So therefore that will continue to be the outcome here. That was uh, that was our case one. So because this uh, using case one we have an outcome. So here the outcome is going to be B. Now what uh, one can observe is that uh, here the outcome was A uh, and uh, for player 1 B was living somewhere below so because A was the so we know that C is neither A nor B A is in the second position so B will live somewhere uh, below uh, it's uh, lower in preference than both C and A for player 1 and the outcome is going to be B so player 1 might as well be tempted to misreport uh, its preference when it is uh, when its true preference profile is p1 hat p2 in that world player 1 will misreport to p1 because the outcome is going to be a which it strictly prefers over b which is the current outcome so we have actually constructed an example that this is actually um, manipulable this uh, social choice function is actually manipulable uh, which is a contradiction so therefore we cannot have this uh, 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 this condition to be true the outcome will certainly be C in this case that proves our case 2 as well so for case 3 we have to use uh, this uh, case 2 uh, in a repeated manner 
So we know what was what was case three. We have C, which is neither A nor B, and D, which is not equal to B. So we know that D, this is not equal to B, and C as before, neither A nor B. Right. So now we can construct this uh, preference uh, profile as uh, as we have done in, in in the previous cases. So P1 hat, P2 hat, and their topmost alternate is a C and B. Right, so we are keeping the second player's topmost alternative to be the same, and the first player's uh, topmost alternative has moved to C, which is neither A nor B. Now, um, as before, let us assume for contradiction that this outcome here, even though the outcome here is A, the outcome here is let's say D. Uh, then, if we look at this transition from P uh, P prime from this preference profile to this one. Then what we can see using case two. So remember what was case two. So case two was uh, the uh, the situation where uh, the so player once so one of the players uh, top alternative does not change, which is which is happening in the case of player one. So its topmost alternative is not changing. The other agent's topmost alternative is changing, and that player's uh, topmost alternative was the outcome here. Uh, so if uh, that holds, so using case two, we have seen that uh, uh, if you change, so whichever player's uh, outcome was here, and that the topmost alternative uh, was chosen as the outcome, that player's topmost alternative will also be chosen here. So therefore, we can conclude uh, from this transition that the outcome here will be B. But similarly, we can use the same case two between these two uh, uh, transition between the transition between these two. Uh, alternatives, uh, preference profiles. So here, because uh, the uh, the top outcome was A, which was the top alternative of player one, then it should continue to be the top alternative of uh, of the uh, of the same player, so which is C. Now we know that C is not equal to B, so therefore this is a contradiction, and. The rest of the proof is essentially trying to argue about such kind of uh, proof by contradiction. We are going to assume something which is uh, which is uh, contrary to the uh, conclusion of this lemma, and we'll construct certain preference profiles uh, where we can show that the, it uh, leads to a co contradiction. So the the case four is when the uh, the top alternative of uh, player one is remaining the same. Uh, both both of them are A. And the second alternative, the top alternative of the second player is neither A nor B, so it is moving to some D. And now uh, we can look at this uh, 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 the same uh, a different constructed preference profile. Uh, the top alternative of player one and uh, two are the same as the original ones. So now we can apply uh, from for this transition from here to here. We can apply case one, which will conclude that this is going to be A. And from this uh, this case to this case, we can use case two uh, because here the uh, one of the players' uh, top alternatives is uh, remaining fixed. The other alternative has actually changed, and uh, for contradiction, we have assumed that this outcome is D. Therefore, this will be equal to D. And because D is not equal to A by assumption here, uh, then this is a contradiction. So we have actually proved case one, uh, two, three, four. Uh, so case four. Uh, so uh, case five is essentially the case where um, you have a kind of a flip. So the top alternative of uh, player two has become the top alternative of player one in this case, and D is as before, neither uh, equal to A, neither uh, nor equal to B. And uh, we can apply a very similar. So we can actually construct uh, a preference profile for for these two players. Uh, so here this will be A. So the topmost alternative of player one is A, and uh, that for player two is D. So this is the same as this D, and this is uh, the same as the original preferences, uh, preference of player one. We don't really care about the rest of the alternatives. So now if we look at this transition from P hat, uh, P prime to P hat, uh, then what we can observe uh, using case uh, case two essentially, this will be case two because. Uh, one of the players top alternative is not changing the other one's top alternative is changing and um, uh, we have actually uh, used the fact that um, uh, so we are assuming that this is the uh, 
uh, this is the top alternative uh, the outcome here so in that case uh, in the new preference profile also the outcome would be d and if you are looking at the transition from the original preference profile to this uh, this last preference profile and then what you can observe is that this uh, agent so this is coming from this uh, uh, case 4 uh, so where the, the the outcome was a and uh, whatever we are changing here is essentially we are looking at that agent whose uh, top alternative is not changing so essentially this will also be so the, the first case was also for case 4 uh, so this was also uh, a conclusion from the case 4 because we, uh, here the the topmost uh, the outcome was the topmost alternative of that agent whose top alternative is not changing the other agents uh, alternative is changing and that is exactly what we have proved in the in case 4 and um, then uh, by using this transition from p1 p2 to p p hat we, we can conclude that this outcome is going to be a and that is uh, because these two are not the same we actually hit a contradiction here and the final case that is case 6 is the following that when you have um, uh, c to be equal to b and d to be equal to a so the the top alternatives of these two players have actually flipped so what uh, what can we do uh, in this context is that uh, so since the outcome here is the uh, top alternative of player one and uh, let us assume for contradiction that the top alternative uh, the outcome here is the top alternative of player two and uh, let us assume another alternative uh, which is neither a nor b we can pick such an alternative because there are three or more alternatives in this uh, uh, in the assumption itself so now we have created some new preference profiles as you can see so we have pushed that x so x uh, was somewhere uh, uh, below so we have uh, constructed a preference profile where b is on the top and that is this that is the same b as uh, as the top alternative of uh, player uh, 2 in the original uh, preference and we have pushed x to the second highest position and in the second one we are keeping this preference so here all these preferences are the same for player 2 and we are pushing x to the top so in one case x is in the second uh, top uh, top position and uh, in the last one it is on the topmost position now let us look at the transitions and we will be using uh, all the different cases that we have already proved here. So let us look at this transition from P prime to, to this transition, this uh, preference profile transition. We already know that here the top alternative is, uh, is D and uh, uh, because the topmost alternatives uh, are not changing, so uh, here uh, B and A and here also they are B and A. So we can use the first case, that is case one, uh, that their top alternatives are not changing, and therefore, uh, if the outcome was uh, D in this case, which was which was the top alternative of player two, then it will continue to be the top alternative of player two. So we will have A here. So that is the that is the conclusion. Similarly, if you look at the transition from this tr uh, this preference profile to the last preference profile here, what is happening there? We can. Uh, we can see that uh, this is uh, this is falling under the condition of uh, case 3 and because uh, uh, a was the outcome here which was the top alternative of player 1 uh, that should be the outcome here so the outcome here will be x now uh, if you if you look at these two alternatives here so you can already begin to see that for player 1 there is a profitable deviation in uh, in these two cases so suppose uh, it was currently uh, uh, looking at this preference profile so player one's true preference profile was p1 hat and in that case the a was uh, uh, both below b and x because x is not neither a nor b and that is going to be the outcome here right but if if it transitions to and misreports its preference to p1 tilde then at least it, it knows that the outcome will be x which is uh, more preferred than A uh, in, in its original preference profile. So uh, player one finds it uh, beneficial to deviate and misreport um, uh, its preference and which is going to le lead to the fact that uh, this F is not a strategy proof mechanism. So that cannot happen. So therefore what we have assumed uh, this is not true. So it, uh, it must be the case that uh, the, the outcome is uh, C which is equal to P in this case. 
Okay, so that actually concludes the proof of all the uh, uh, exhaustive cases and we have proved the Gibbs Shadowbert result uh, for for two agents. So this is the the main intuition how it is it is done. The the actual proof with uh, with more than two agents essentially uses induction on this uh, on this number of agents and um, I'm not going to prove that. If you are interested, you can uh, look at this uh, the this paper uh, which is titled a direct proof of GS theorem and um, that will give you the complete details it's just uh, you'll have to do a lot more accounting than than what we have done in this case